Well, first, I want to thank Coach Banstra for having me on today. Uh, great opportunity to be able to take some time uh, and just talk some football. Uh, although, uh, you know, we're all doing, uh, it's a crazy time. We're all doing things for our families. And uh, it's just nice to be able to take some time and, and talk some football. Uh, it's, uh, I hope everyone that, that's listening is, is safe and your families are safe and, uh, and you're finding your way through this. And, uh, but, you know, football people were, were built for, for fighting adversity and dealing with adversity and, and showing positive leadership, you know, during times of, of struggle. We're definitely going to get through this. Uh, definitely encouraging to hear lots of talk about, you know, how we're going to play football and how training camp is going to be safe. A lot of conversations about that going on. And I you know our student athletes are really looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, you, you know, Utica College, we love talking football and sharing. You know, many of my assistants have been on Coach Amster's uh, Twitter post here and, uh, and podcast. And, uh, just really pleased I get a chance to, to share some things with you in regards to our special teams. If you want to learn more about Utica College football, you can go to ucpioneers.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Utica underscore football. You know, follow all the great things that our program is doing. We're a Division three program and one of the best Division three programs in the country, most competitive in the Empire Rate here in central New York, about an hour east of uh, Syracuse and about an hour and a half west of Albany here in the Mohawk Valley. And uh, you know, we're proud Utica guys, uh, and we love what we do. I'm going to get right into the football of it. Uh, you know, we're going to talk today. We're talking Utica College, a uh, shield punt. Uh, we're very fortunate. It's really unique when you can lead a statistical category in the country. And a lot of things came together last year. We had the number one defensive punt unit in the country. Uh, we gave up negative punt return yards as a unit. And you'll be able to see here in a little bit uh, on the on the uh, on the film as I show you. The way the presentation is going to go today is I have a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to take my time, kind of install, uh, you know, our, our punt team with you. We'll kick back. We'll watch some film, both some practice film and some game film. And I do have some drill tape that I want to get to as well. So as we get right into this, uh, you know, first it's about you having a philosophy. So very unique for me, you know, uh, and, you know my first year coaching, uh, I was coaching special teams. I've coached special teams every year even though I was an old defensive lineman and did not play special teams in college. I just love everything about it. I love the, the hustle, the attitude, uh, the, the way the guys uh, you really have to be very unselfish players and, and really work hard at the techniques that are involved. So it's a big about controlling field position. You have to control field position. And when you can control the field position, you're going to win football games. Field position plus momentum is going to give you a point. I did want to quickly share with you an in-season special teams so you can see the amount of time that's committed. And that's one way that you can really truly say, hey, how committed are you to special teams? How much time do you put into it? So Monday is when we have our big scouting report meeting, the uh, way we divide up the staff. So although I may be the special teams coordinator, I have coaches designated. They are uh, watching our opponent's punt team. They are watching our opponent's punt return, kickoff, kick return, and coming to the meeting with ideas and notes as we develop our special team scatter report that we'll hand out to our guys each week, both digitally and paper version. On Tuesday at practice, we dedicate 20 minutes to special teams, five minutes for extra point field goal, uh, five minutes for some type of indie special teams individual period, uh, five minutes of punt, and then five minutes of team uh, punt return. So, you know, we'll do punt every day. I, I was taught a long time ago in college from my college coach that the punt was the most important play in football. That stuck with me uh, to this day. Uh, Wednesdays, we'll turn around. Again, we'll do five minutes of punt. We'll do five minutes of kick, kick off, five minutes of kick return, and then team extra point field goal. And then Thursday, we call it Specs Thursday. We do them all. It's more of an up-tempo drill. The guys get fired up for special teams Thursday. And in, in 25 minutes, we go through all of them and finish with like our hands team and our onside kick at the end of that. And then Friday, we'll come back on, maybe there was something we didn't like during the week, just something we want to emphasize, whether it be a formation, whether it be a technique, and then we'll do that in our Friday practice. So it kind of gives you an idea on the on the schedule during the season. Uh, I didn't give you the training camp, uh, but we'll, we'll, I'll give you more ideas. I show you the film, like, you know, we'll have a 15 minute block of just special team stations, and guys working on returning and lawn snapping and then turn back around and do 15 minutes of, um, you know, punt, punt return team, you know, versus scout team. So during training camp, that number will jump to almost 30 to 35 minutes of special teams during training camp. 
commit to a you know, two and a half, three hour practice. Also wanted to share with you a, a special teams like a script and something you could look at and possibly use. And this would be more of like a training camp type type schedule where we have more time. So this is like this is practice too, right? Of training camp. And you see where Specs Indy, we've decided we're gonna do special team stations. Okay. So during that time, you know, you want to let coaches know where they are in the field. So everyone loves diagrams, okay? And then what they're doing. So like down below, you see that Coach Will Pluff, our D coordinator, he's doing the wall drill. And he's got a drill set up where the guys are, you know, really practicing on the wall punt return. And how to make sure that we block, you know, that we block forward or up, that we never go back to block someone, right? things like that. And we've got pester drill, take it off the foot, stay on the block and leverage tackle. We're usually looking to do, you know, five stations, two minutes a piece, get that done in about 10 minutes, right? Or that might be a 15 minute period. And during that, our punters, our returners, and our long snappers are working separately. So that would be like part of our special teams indie that I talked about uh, just a few minutes ago. And then we get into our team periods and when we're really going well and we're going quickly, we get about a minute for a play as you look at these, right? So we're, we get, we script 10 plays and it'll take us about 10 minutes to get those plays in. We really try not to stop and talk a lot on the field. We try, not that we don't do it sometimes. We'd rather teach off the film and practice. And that's the advantage we have with the way our training camp is set up. You can imagine we go from, you know, night meetings when we install things. So we'll, in, we'll have a special teams installation meeting. The next in the morning, we'll get up and we'll have a walkthrough practice in the morning. So they'll install it in film, walk through it in the morning and then do it in the afternoon. And by the time the afternoon comes, Sometimes we'll do a dry run of the team periods so everyone knows the moving pieces and where we need to go. So we got team one, where we're doing our veteran punt return, or excuse me, our veteran punt versus our rookie punt return. Right, you see on there, need the beanies for that young coach that's got to have the, the yellow beanies for the helmets, right? Uh, we're, we're, we're in a walkthrough and we don't have helmets on, we have orange jerseys for the guy. And then the second session below, we have a veteran punt return versus our rookie punt, and then we'll and we, uh, have it all scripted. You want your special teams to be the difference. And so how, you know, what are our objectives, right? And anything, any unit you have, you have goals. So we want to be able to score points, prevent a score, win the field position battle, create or change the momentum of the game. There, you look in college football and like you can just go on your own and pull plays off of YouTube. Some of the plays that just, just totally your whole stadium, you know, can light up and explode with excitement. We have a big kick return for a touchdown. Or all of a sudden you pin someone down in the one yard line and your defense is able to get a safety a couple of plays later. I totally can we want to create a change of momentum of the game. And you know, it's definitely a hustle unit and, and guys that can give that give maximum effort. Uh, we talk about winning plays, not just on special teams, but we talk about like winning plays on defense. And so the defensive guys really can connect with this. And so winning plays are things that we can chart that we know that if we do these things, we have a better chance to win the game. So like on defense, it's sacks, pass breakups. Um, you know, turnovers and things like that on, on special teams. It's free. If you block a kick, your chances of winning a game go way up. If you score a touchdown on special teams, your, your opportunity to win the football game goes way up. If you create a turnover, we may be able to do that on, you know, on a punt or kickoff and they fumble it or we cause a fumble, get the, get, create our possession for our offense. And then we talk to it in regards to first downs, like our return. It's like our kick return and punt return are trying to gain first downs. So punt return, if we can average 15 yards of punt return, we're pleased with that. Because that's saying that that unit is giving our offense another first down that they wouldn't have normally get. And then down here's a little chart that, geez, it's been around forever. You know, hey, if you could all of a sudden have a kick return, it's offense start on the plus 20, there's a two and three chance they're going to score some points. Right? And it works its way back. If you can return a big kick return to the 50 yard line, right, you have a one in five chance of scoring. And then the opposite is true, right? So if you can kick off and keep the opponent inside their 20 on the kickoff, or if you can pin them inside the 20, which is a statistic in college football, right? Pins inside the 20, they have a one in 30 chance of scoring, right? That's very difficult for an offense to go 60, 70 yards, 80 yards. So why, you know, why we do the shield, shield punt, right? Everyone wants to know why we do that. And, and I've done it both. I've done the old pro punt where the guys are kick sliding and they got their, you know, the iron cross and inside outside punch, they got gaps and they're backing up and guys are teeing off on them. 
reason why we went to the shield years ago is the blocking techniques are simple. The rules are very simple and it allows your players to play aggressive. And what we've done, particularly this year, where I really feel that coaches can benefit from this is there's a variety of formations that you can do that maybe will adapt to your team. Maybe you don't want to have the true shield of three guys. Maybe you're worried about not blocking a guy. Well, there's things that you can do within the scheme. I only have one personal protector and walk two guys up in the line of scrimmage that you're unblocked guys far away. We'll, we'll talk to that later. But you want your guys to be able aggressive. You want them to be able to think quickly. It really maximize your ability to cover. I think that's one of the key things. So you'll see that our long snapper doesn't have to block. And how that take, not only takes things off his mind and he can focus on the snap operation, but how good a cover guy he can be, even if he's not the best athlete, he is in the way of the returner. They feel him running down the field. That's a huge. And also, and you'll see as we go through the film, is that when, a, say I'm the guard, and I know a guy is pestering me, and he's not rushing, I can take off. That really maximizes your ability to cover. Uh, and then we practice point, as I mentioned earlier, more than any other specialty. Right? The unit controls the flow of the game by controlling the field position. Right? And we talk about flipping the field. And we will do sudden change. And many of you are familiar with a sudden change. Maybe you do it, you know, you put the ball on the one-yard line. It's a sudden change turnover, that type of thing. We'll do it on special teams as well. So I'll blow the whistle or the horn three times in the middle of practice, and we're looking to pin someone inside the 20. Or the ball's on the one, and we're doing a tight punt. And we got to get it out of there. And I mentioned the ability to work different formations there with our last four. So one of the things, you know, taking our time here, it's pre-snap reads of defenders. And our teams try to disguise, you know, you'll have teams and they'll all get in a stance so you can't tell if they're if they're coming after you or not. But you can get a pre-snap read and that allows you to be aggressive. So is their stance even? Are their feet even? Are their feet stacked? And you can tell that. Then if all of a sudden they're even, they're not rushing. They're looking to block you. Now you can take off and go cover and do your coverage responsibility, right? Most times when they're spring stance, now we got to assume, hey, they're going to rush. Got to protect first. And then you watch the guy's eyes. You know, one of the biggest things in football is their eyes. Where are they looking? Are they staring right at you? And they're probably looking to block you. Pre-snap reads are key. All right, so on this slide, it shows our alignment. And so it shows for, for a red alignment, right? Now, a red call with a right call. And our right side, the splits between the end tackle and guard are three yard splits. Where on the way from the call, on the left side, we have two, two, and three. And that really speaks to, and we'll get to it, that the left guard and left tackle, that they really got to protect that inside gap that they have further to go on their bucket step. Our shield, their toes are at six, and our punter's toes are at 14. Well, we actually changed that. Uh, when we first installed this a few years ago, our shield was at seven, and our punter was back at 14 and a half. And we really felt there were some advantages the last couple of years, moving our shield up, taking on those rushers sooner, having a little bit further distance away uh, from our punter. So in case he has a low trajectory of punt, it reduces the chance that it hits one of those guys in the shield. The other thing to talk about we're on this slide too is how we personnel this. Our left wing, right wing, and first protector, those are our big guys, our offensive linemen, our defensive linemen, big tight ends, big linebackers. You want those guys to have some, some size to them. They could be a linebacker, but you know they, you know, you like them to be, you know, 220, 230 at least. You like when these guys are, are 270, 280, and they're bigger and really can protect the front. Uh, and then in, in the frontage, the ends are DBs. They're like your, you know, your gunners if you were in a normal pro pump, right? Those those guys got some speed, can cover. They're going to be ball guys. We go over the coverage in a little bit. Our tackles maybe a little bigger and longer, outside linebacker, safety type, and those guards are like inside linebacker. Our blocking techniques, we talked about them being simple. So in this slide, we've got diagrams and, and it's you know, kind of written below. But on this slide here, the uh, what happens here is, is that it's slide step or bucket step, okay? So if the man's on me, I'm typically gonna slide step. If he's off, I'm gonna bucket step. And it could be off inside or off outside. The one asterisk will be if, if the guy is to our inside, we probably don't like him slide stepping there. We really wanna bucket and rip through that inside number. So that, that's one little asterisk to that. But if a man's on, we're gonna slide step. Man's off, we're gonna bucket. And we'll be able to show you the film here and I'll show you even better. All right. So our alignment, we talked about our toes at six. Our technique for the shield, okay? Is they're gonna shimmy their feet. They're gonna chop their feet. 
and they're going to block with their hands. Okay, mistakes when they go to lean with the shoulder. They want to stay big and keep their feet moving. They will step to block someone, but they'll use their hands. Those are really key. Keeping their shoulders as square as possible. All right. And then we've done different things with the personal protector. He can either fit between the wings. He can go to the right side or the left side. And I can I can show you guys that uh, later as we go through the count. Don't catch. So let's go through the count. All right. I'll make sure I kind of cut off when I went full screen here. When we go to the count, all right, we first identify how many returners there are. Is there one returner or two returners? And that's part of our cadence. Okay. And then the front inch, they have to count outside in. So the right end counts one and two, three, four, five, the whole right side. First protector, right wing. One, two, three, four, five from the right, and they go outside in from the left. One, two, three, four, five in the count. You see there's less people in the in the two high scenario where there's only a one five there in the middle. So here's our, our red protection. So we go red protection, we have a front side and a back side, reds to the right. Our right end's got number one, our right tackle's got number two, our right guard has number three, our personal protector has number four, our right wing has number five. Our left wing, now he's from the left side. So we do not block the furthest man on the left side in red protection. He's unblocked. And because of the distance that he has to travel, because we have the shield there, and we have good operation with our long snapper and punter, we can leave that guy unblocked. So now the left guard's got, excuse me, left end has two. So he knows not to count one. Left tackle has three, left guard has four, left wing has five, and they just have to communicate, right? They have to communicate. If guys start moving around, the first protector's got to give them time to make their adjustments. So we have a front side and we have a back side. Yellow is the opposite. So yellow protection, now we're going to not block the guy off to the right. And it's really changed over the years when and how we call these. It used to be the first few years, Ball in the middle, ball in the right hash, we were red. Ball in the left hash, we were yellow. That that has changed now. Now it's based on formation. It's based on do we want to protect the player's foot and try to get us in the, in the best scenario. Of the so it's nice to have them in the variety, and then you can utilize them uh, based upon what you're seeing in game film or make adjustments to them. So this just literally flips. So now the left end's got one, left tackle two, left guard three, and so on. What's nice is, and we are, we are actually a big two returner team. We like to get the ball caught, make sure we get, number one, get the ball back. Is that we have two returners, there's actually less, less chances of bucket stepping. And yeah, now you have both sides, we can block everyone, right? So now both sides have one, two, three, and tackle guard respectively. And the personal protector and the, and the wings have four, five, four. So if they go to two returner, and we go, now it's too high, and the guys have to hear that. So they always, they always anticipate it's one high. And all of a sudden, if they call two high, then they'll know uh, the difference. I'll go through the cadence here with you in a minute. And now the count will change. And then these are our coverage responsibilities, okay? So the first wave, second wave, and third wave. So our first wave of the coverage is ball guys. And what's nice about this for our football team is there is some carryover to this coverage with our kickoff team. Because in our kickoff team, we have coverage guys and we have hit guys. So our first wave, those are like our hit guys, our ball guys. So our ends and long snapper, they are going to the ball. So aggressively that even if the, if the returner bounces to the outside, that's okay. Okay. The second wave are our guards and tackle. And that's where you're going to have two guys that are going to work together. And they're, they're going to work first man out, second man out, and we will drill this. So the first man out is going to be five yards away from the returner. The second man out is going to work to 10 yards outside the returner. And if the returner runs runs away, then you kind of then you, then we'll be fold and then we'll be uh, kind of trail, which I'll go over that here in a little bit. And then the third wave is our shield, the last three guys, and they just kind of go down and, and bracket the returner. And typically, those guys uh, aren't in in the play. We did have a huge big hit uh, in, a, in a conference win this year where a first protector got to unload on a guy, which which was a lot of fun. I believe I believe I had that clip in the film for you guys too. So here, this kind of gives you the diagram of the, you know, the coverage technique on the front side of the coverage, right? So you, this is where you see the ends really bending into the ball, the long snapper going to the ball. You can see the guard and tackle first out, second out. Let me just take a minute and explain that. Now, how does that occur? Well, if the guard, say the guard has a guy uh, pester blocking him with feet parallel, he's going to quickly take off. 
he's going to be first out. Where say the tackles guy is rushing and he's bucketing to block him, he's going to come out late. So if he comes out late, he'll see the jersey number of his partner. He'll see the jersey number of the guard, and then he'll automatically work to get out there. And I'll show you the film to get the nerves outside. Those guys really end up working together a lot. We typically will keep guys on one side the whole year. They'll work right side and they'll work left side. And now sometimes a guy may have to flip, but we really like to keep guys on one side of the ball the whole, whole year. You know, so it, you know, kind of a cadence, right? You know, so it'll be like, you know, the, the personal protector come up red, red, one high, one high, ready. And that's how the cadence would go. Or they would say two high. So it'll go red, red. So it started to the right. Too high, too high. Ready. And then anytime after ready is when the long snapper can snap the ball. So that's the end of the of the, uh, the the presentation. So I'm looking forward to here pulling up the film for you guys. Good night. You know, we are very fortunate to have uh, the largest air support instructor in the United States of America at Utica College, believe it or not. Uh, it's, it's pretty wild. The turf field is about a 40 by 80 yard turf field. There's actually to the left of this picture, there's an indoor track or weight rooms in there. We have 10 racks in the weight room. It's an amazing facility where our guys can go and they can warm up on the four basketball courts inside the track, get a great workout in the weight room, and then come out to the turf and do flood work and do some different agility work really blessed to have this facility. So this is, this is right here on campus at the Utica College. And uh, so now you get an idea here uh, on the, on the, uh, the formation, okay? So we kind of let this go here a little bit. And uh, so right here now, we got our long snapper, right guard, right tackle. So here we go, this is, this is better, so we can start in the field. So we're on the left hash, we're calling yellow. And as the personal protector is going, one high, one high. He's walking over to the left side, so we'll adjust him, right? So now because it's yellow, now you'll watch these guys block. Yellow protection. Okay, so here we go. So we got right now, why is this left end able to take off, right? Number 23 here, he's able to take off because he knows, see the stance here? He knows this is a jammer, and now I can just take him, go on, go right to the ball. So there's one. Left tackle has two, left guard has three. First protector is coming over to this side as he has four. But I think what's really nice here, you can see our, our first team all-conference linebacker, right? And again, our starters play special teams, okay? Is a really nice bucket step here by Quasi, okay? And he's going to look at Now, it's tough, a little tougher without pads on. We'll do some drill work where we'll have guys with the orange jerseys that have shields where we can really deliver a blow. So what we want that right guard to do is really club and rip through that inside number. And you can see where that's really an aggressive move, you know? So, yeah, right there, he's got to give some ground in the bucket, but he can club, rip, and go. And you can see him adjusting to get to his path. So he sees that the tackle is out before him. And you can see this right here. So here's our tackle out before him. He sees him. And watch Quasi, you know, really work to get to the 10 yards outside and get outside him. You can see that there. Gotta get a nice end zone shot here. Okay, oh, yellow call. Again, we're not we're not gonna block this guy here. He's he's being let go. So here are the tougher blocks, right? We gotta get to the inside and get these three bucket steps. So left guard responsible for three on yellow. I think he makes a mistake on this one, right? You gotta, gotta, gotta block him up. All right, pretty good all around here. I right, see that right end, right? He gets across this guy. He can do it. It's about getting depth and width, and they may collision on three and a half, four yards behind the line of scrimmage, and that's okay. But I think you can see here how aggressive the guys can be. I really, really watch, you know, as much as like the left guard's making a mistake. Right. Well, you know, he he sees the parallel feet, right? So he checks him. I don't know how much he checks him, but if he sees that he's sitting there, he can take right off. And you can see that aggressiveness we talk about that you get with the coverage on. So now we go over to the right hash. We're gonna go red here, red protection. 
not going to block this guy here. This is a better shot. Our personal protector now is all the way over here to the right. We're blocking one, two, three. Uh, and guard, uh, tackle guard, our first protector has four. Okay, so here we're talking about the left end. They want to go too flat with that step. They really got to get depth and width and exaggerate that bucket. Because what you don't want is this. You don't want four guys on your shield of three. And if one guy doesn't block his guy, that's where you have the potential of someone uh, you know, blocking a kick on. But you can see here, Right, we got some big guys. Our starting right tackle, our starting center, all right, and a defensive lineman here. We got some. Actually, that's a tight end. Yeah, that's a defensive tackle there. There's another yellow. We were very blessed. Our long snap, our long snappers were very good, putting it right on the punter's hip. It's funny in these clips; these aren't our starting punters. Our starting punter, you'll see when we get to the game clips. His hang time was outstanding. Watch this right guard here. Bucket, rip across. That's J.J. O'Connor, our all-conference tight end. Bucket, rip across. And watch him exaggerate back because he sees the tackle. This is a really good example of that guard tackle. for. So he sees the tackle in front of him. Right there, he sees the tackle in front of him, who's going to win five yards, and watch him really bust his butt and hustle to get out to 10. That's a really good job of seeing that coverage. And he ends up making the play. The thing I think that we've all learned to do, and if you haven't, is like how to learn do football without pads on. We've really gotten better at that. The tempo, but it's still a fast tempo. We're not killing each other. The guys have done a nice job of that. Now we can get to, to on the field here. We just let this run. We had a great long snapper, Anthony DeCunto, Paramus Catholic High School down in Jersey. And he uh, got to play in an all-star game this year. His snap to punter was pretty consistent between 0.75 and like 0.78. Like he was under 0.8. Many teams didn't want to deal with returning it. Makai Medici was an honorable mention D3football.com All-American out of Shaker High School out of Albany. Had a great year as also our field goal kicker. We're glad he's back next year. You can see the speed of that kick. And you can see now, I didn't like how our right end, I'm going to go to the smaller view. Well, I probably can move the video around, right? I can move us around here. There we go. <laughs> Give me one second here. We're going back. Because I don't like how number two, right, goes way out to the right. He needs to go right now to the ball. Right now, go to the ball. Now, he's fast, so he still ends up getting there. But he needs to go right now on that. We got a yellow call. We do have a, a call, guys, where if a team doesn't force a kick, right, it's hard not to talk punt return when we're doing this, you have to force punts. Is how I would give a guy a thumbs up. If they don't rush and it's fourth and five or less and you want to take off running, you can go ahead. Because they, they did not force kicks, as you can see here. Okay, number 60 was offensive line for us, our long snapper, you know, yeah, is he, is he going to most athletic for open field tackling? No, but I'll tell you what, he would cover, cover well, and get in the way of the return. See the first guy down there. Right, that's an offensive lineman. All right, no one to do with that. We do have some other formations that will, will come up here in a little bit. Okay, right here you can tell we're, so okay, hey coach, you're on the right hash and you're calling red. Because we started saying, you know what, I don't care where the ball is, we're going to protect our punter's leg. And like the bucket step is the hardest step here, 
and we didn't want to do that to the side of his leg. So we would call red a good amount, or we'd at least mix it up. Because if you run the same protection all the time in the right hash, then they're going to try to find a weakness and exploit it if they can. Now, I don't like how he, he, he leaned with his shoulders there. Use your hands in the shield. But so we look, we got, you know, just like talk about our guys. We got Mike Cruder's a freshman. This was his first college start, big conference game. He's from Hog on Long Island. You got you got Michael Carr Johnson, first team all conference out of Punch Tech in Buffalo. And then you got our starting center out of Liverpool, right down the road here in Syracuse. Get the big boys up there. And then, like, you know, it's amazing. Okay, who are these guys, right? Running back, running back, outside linebacker, right? A corner, another running back. You know, you talk to guys all the time. You got five running backs on your team. Only one of them goes on the field at a time, guys. They got to go out there and contribute on special teams. So here now, we, we make an open call, and we take our right end, and we split them up. Protection's the same. We just took that guy out of the blocking, and that helps with the end's coverage. Still has ball. So you see where our two ball guys are? Right at the return. The hang time we had was unbelievable. Right? Ball's inside the 20. Now we would we would shift to this too. Good to shift to your formations. Kind of slow down the rush. This is shield open right. Same protection. I think what's really nice here is like our left guard. And you watch him, I know he's buying the goalpost. I got to get the bigger lift next to your coach and, and get the goalpost out of the fixture, get up there a little higher. But look at that bucket rip and go. That's Anthony, that's Anthony McDonald, Huntington High School, Long Island. That's, again, backup linebacker, good special teams player for us. And he's really working. I mean, you know, get to that five yards, right? You got to work further wider out. That's why I got that. That's from during the season, some of these little notes on here. Okay, we got another shield open right. I told the Anna, so you're getting too far out there. I don't want him to go too far away, right? Maybe four yards outside the hash, and that could be the difference of getting there. That's why I know it's there because we're kind of too far away. Now, hopefully, you see all the blue jerseys past the white jerseys. That's one of the hardest things to do, right? Is block on punt return or be like the first line on kick return. And so like, why would we, you know, it's for us, why are we going to kick slide and let them tee off on us, okay? There's another point inside the 20. Okay, so we went too high here because we knew that they weren't rushing and they had three linebackers. Now you got to be careful of that because all of a sudden if these three linebackers walk up in the line of scrimmage and go, you got to be able to audible and get back to your, your best protection. But we called too high because they weren't forcing the kick at all, and that allowed us to get our coverage better. So now these guys like too high because they're the ones that bucket most of the time because we call red a higher percentage of the time. Now they get the block, one, two, three. Again, that helps them cover. You know, it's wild as I want to brag about number three here, uh, Tim Hogan's out of Glen Cove, you know, out of Long Island, and, like, unbelievable special teams player. He scored touchdowns on our football team as a kick returner. He's recovered a fumble, forcing a kick on a punt uh, in, 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 a, in a conference game a couple of years ago. Go right to the end zone. You can tell I, I coach, I'm a line guy, defensive line coach, so I like going to the end zone. But I do like to do this in a pin situation, Okay. And now here they actually block our long snapper. And now, you know, the whole, you got to understand, you got to have some fun with the notes. So we're in the meeting and, you know, I put in there our long snapper is a beast, right? He loves it, number 60 here. They're blocking him. Got to work on ripping stack in there. <laughs> so what we like to do either open or I think in the next couple of clips is hip in a pin situation. This is still uh, open. This is a scenario I talked about where you want to have that second wave because you never know 
right? Well, the officials are going to get this now. This particular player had done this before. He give like a, a illegal fair catch signal, right? So he's given a right there. He clearly fair caught it, but he's still returning the ball, all right? So here comes Ben Wiedis, senior, whap, <laughs> and the, the whole room goes nuts, right? You go nuts there. So that kind of helps your punt return when you get a penalty on it. Well, going into this game, we were already uh, we were negative. Uh, we were negative the whole year. We were negative going this game. Just kind of helped our number. Here we go. Now this is we call this formation hip, all right? And the, what it does, it gets teams nervous about because now that guy's eligible. Oh, they got to have a fake out of this, which we do, right? I have a note here. You see how my right tackle is? He's he's catching. You see that how they're they're driving him backwards? That's not good, right? We're gonna get after him for that. What a great kick! They're starting the ball on the thirteen yard line here. It's a great kick. Sorry. So now hip, all right, it's the same protection. And here we're calling it yellow, right? So we can be one and two on the protection, right? We're not going to split this guy out and not block him. So we're calling the protection to this open side here. We got yellow on. This one I talked to you guys about, like, I don't like this, the slide step on man on when he's inside. So our right guard, Josh Fennickle here, okay? Burke Catholic High School, section section nine in New York. He, he, I want him to bucket and collision this. And he doesn't do that. And like that guy can like get into the shield and cause trouble. Great kick, great kick in the uh, corner kick there. Here's another pin, hip pin. This is an unbelievable football play. We try to get as many people involved as possible. So Brandon Few was probably the best backup punter in New York uh, from Buffalo here. And we brought him in just to pin punt sometimes. He's really good at it. We catch this thing inside the two. So, you know, we coach up, you know, hey, what do we do on our pin situation? Well, how we coach it is that the gunner here, the end, excuse me, he's going to the goal line to work the goal line. The long snapper in the end away are going to the ball. If the ball is in the middle and you're pinning, both ends go to the goal line and the long snapper goes to the ball. If the ball is over on this hash over here, then it flips and we're probably going to split a guy out. The guy who split is going to the goal line, but you still have the guys go to the ball. And you just got to remind these guys that, hey, they can be in the end zone. It's not the pros. The end zone of this is, is pretty wild. Now, one thing I didn't mention, and I apologize, okay, is when we go to hip formation, we take our left wing, and we walk him up, and he becomes the guard. Okay, so as we do that, and we shift to this. That'll give people some problems. All of a sudden, they're preparing for your different formations, and we're shifting. And so that's one of the – so now we just have two guys back there on the shield. But what's great is the count's the same. He still has four. And it's nice when he's an offensive lineman – because if he has the bucket, they do that stuff all the time. So this shows the lines that we're going to the goal line, we're going to the ball, we're going to or we're going to return it, right? Going to the ball. Again. Catch the ball. Now they got to start the ball in the two. This is our tight punt. And so say you're you're, you're watching the film. You know, like coach, listen, man. Your long snap was unbelievable. I don't feel comfortable leaving a guy unblocked. Okay, fine. Do the same punt. Walk your shield right up. Close. Now your unblocked guy is a whole other person away. Same protection, same deal. We use this protection if we're backed up inside. If our, if our punter now has to go, it's inside the three. Excuse me. Because if he's on the four, you have the 10 yards of the end zone, we're fine. But when he gets down uh, on the three yard line and inside, then we go to our tight punt. No matter where the ball is, we are going to go red. Auto red call. So we tighten our splits to a yard and a half. And as these, uh, again, you can see these are the big guys here that have walked up and now it's made it longer. So we're one, two, three, 
He still has four, and I have five. It's the same count. Beautiful thing. We're leaving this guy go. Right? I got here, 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 and I got to work my butt to get there. The punter now, it's a one-step kick. Right? He has to adjust his feet. You know, on the back of the end zone, it's a one-step punt. That's a nice bucket by 23, the left end. Bucket, rip, and run. And it's funny, today as I was getting ready for to do the presentation, I'm like, why don't we just run a tight punt in the middle of the field just to do it, right? That could give someone some trouble and uh, something I was thinking about, using our formations all the time. So here's another tight punt. We're over here on this hash. doesn't matter the hash it's on. Now, 81 is our kickoff guy. Just, he's just filling in here. This is our backup long snapper. But I tell you what, 27 is a real nice job. So does 42 of understanding what they got to do here. So, you know, no helmets. We're in the orange jerseys for the scout team. Got to communicate first out, second out. They didn't, do, they didn't do a great job there. So the other formation we went through last year was twins. This was a really benefit for us as well. At times, they would get too far away, in my opinion. But what's great is it's the same protection. It's our first game of the year last year, our orange out game under the lights. Gaetano Stadium. Protection's the same. So again, what we've done is we've walked up the right wing to be the guard. Here's our guard is here, and then our end and tackle are out there in space. Right? Why can this guy just take off? Because in the count, three is looking to block. That's where you get the aggressiveness on this point. A lot of fair catches. Really good position here. Really good position here. There's a mistake, right? Don't have all great things when you're showing film. So he's supposed to block three and doesn't. <laughs> Not good. When you have a good operation time, that guy still can't make the make the play. Unbelievable hang time. So this is uh this is hip. And you can really see here better because we're inside that that's the right wing. And then the guard bumps out, tackle, and end on the hip formation. Now, again, this is again we're, this is when we first installed this. That's too big a split. He's too wide out. Ah, and you got to have some fun. And, like, if you're going to fake, you have to practice the fake every week, right? You know, you got to do that. You get the crazy two-point play. Eagles win the Super Bowl. They practice that all the time. Right? Philly really special. So we practiced this all year and big conference game on the road. And the way we taught it was we're going to shift to empty, three by two empty, and the punter is going to read it three to two. And if they don't cover a guy, him. now you can see it's like fourth and one. Right? It's fourth and one. If if he didn't feel safe, he could just kick it. And it was it was blue, blue. So everyone knew. Oh, man. <laughs> down below, Jimmy Warren, wide open. Wide open down here. We'll still be running right now. Right? But, you know, hey, Makai looked at three. He saw three was covered. Right? It wasn't much of a rush. Sorry, I got the, he still got a great punt off here. And what's wild about that is the coverage that you get. Right? And it really slows them down. Because what happened, I felt, a couple years of running the shield, they're trying to pack the A-gaps and run four guys in there and mess with you. Well, now you start going to different formations and, and you keep them on their heels a little bit. Ball's inside the 10. We'll take that. They got to go 90 yards. So that, this again, you know, we put this on film and it gets me thinking, man, we got to do that more often just for the coverage purposes. And I tell you, finish the tackle at the end.
I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to show you guys some of the drills. So this first drill is called stay on the block drill. We have the drill where the coach is here and you have the defender and the blocker and you just gonna kind of bounce his back and forth like a mirror dodge. And you kind of stay engaged with him. And then the coach is going to point in the direction and you got to stay on the block forever. Kick returns and punt returns, you have to stay on blocks forever. Longest plays in football. So he's going to point and see how these guys now take off running. And our guys are going to really work to hustle. And you can see this is really good by both these guys. You cannot have a hand on a back. Then you go crazy as a coach, right? Because that's the one time you're going to have a kick return, punt return for touchdown called back, right? So we talk elbow and hip, elbow and hip, elbow and hip. Our guys, it's ingrained in their minds. You can see we got a couple of veterans here doing a nice job of that. Let this run a couple. Hey, I have three of each one. We're back and forth, back and forth. They blow the whistle, right? The guys take off, and you can see where this is going to be like what they would do on a on a blocking scenario. Very good elbow and hip. So now this next one, focus on the drill behind them, and you got offensive guys. Maybe your team doesn't go both ways. Those offensive guys got to tackle. And so we're going to work on leverage, tackling. So you can see we're really big with the high leg, right? You want to call it hawk tackle, whatever you want to call it. And you see right here, it's near leg to the ball. They they can't let this guy go outside them. They keep their leverage. They have outside leverage here. Tackle, float up through. If you don't have the tackle rings, you got to buy them. One of the greatest things ever. I know they were for rugby. I wish I don't know where they were 10 years ago. One of the greatest things, so you get, get the white jerseys going out there and tackle. They want to keep their lever. What happens to these offensive guys is they want to break down too soon. They need to suck up the space. Then all of a sudden, get that high leg. This is a great drill we do, this rip and stack drill. This is good for kickoff. This is good for punt. All right? So as I got a guy on me, I really want to rip, lean, and exaggerate, and I rip, and I want to stack the block like a stack of pancakes. I want to get behind him, right? Rip and stack that block, and we'll let this run. I got a few good ones of this, of this here. Again, this is great for punt coverage. This is great for kickoff coverage as well. You really want to exaggerate that rip. That's a good clip there. There's that same, I was wearing a, at a million practice series. You got that same number three on that last one. Tim Hogan running back. So here's the pester drill. Now, I have this on here. I don't know if we're going to do it like this this year. I got to be honest. But on the line of scrimmage, what we're trying to do here is punch and then follow and trail. Not a great rep there, okay? And when we, we go to trail, at some point, even if you're behind the guy and you're trailing him, at some point, he's going to lower his hips, and you'll catch up, and you got to get your hands on his elbow and hip. We're going to do that there. The end of that one was good. So here's another leverage tackle drill. Again, you don't have to hit guys to practice tackling. We're going to suck up the space, right? We got to keep them. We can't let the grab it here bounce outside. Keep our leverage. Working together. Leverage tackle. Get in position to tackle. Got to suck up the space more. Some young guys there. Here's the user on the field. They a, a, um, a stay on the block drill, right? Back and forth, back and forth. This is a better view, I think, than the view you had inside of guys staying on the block. But I really liked how the last guy here, as he was going, no hands on the back, man. If you see it as a coach, you're going crazy, right? Elbow and hip. Elbow and hip here. Elbow and hip. A lot of guys now are teaching the whole box out, right? We're talking about doing that this year. If you're in a box now, like in basketball, you don't get that illegal block, the big kill shots, right? Elbow and hip. Then you just have to defeat some blocks. So we do it different ways. Here it's just, you know, guy shield, club rip, get in position to tackle, right? Then you add the ring. Okay, I want them to be on the front part of that. Ring. I don't want them on the back part of the ring. 
defeating blocks. Front part of the ring, there you go, 13. That's a, that's a better job. Got to get those white jerseys tackling, those receivers tackling. All right, again, here's Pester drill on the field. We're actually talking about doing more of an attack, like right now, and go and attack. Because the more that we attack, and you think about our technique, the more they're going to stay in. And if we can give the returner that second on the line of scrimmage, that's better. So we're going to try and be probably more aggressive this year than what you're seeing. Here, his hands are on the back. We're going crazy there. 13, that's no good. That's a nice job. See where his hands are, right? Not going to get a flag there. There we go. There's other drills that will work into that as well, that we will work into, um, like taking it off the foot, right? Blocking kicks. So it's amazing how many kicks that we blocked. And I wouldn't say that we're a block team, but our guys know that the force point or the block point, excuse me, is at 10 yards. So we always have two guys forcing kicks, a block points at 10. So what's nice is you get one of your stations is take it off the foot. You get a football and a harness and a cone, coach on his knee. You have uh, two lines, a guy coming from 10 yards. You flip the ball out, they take it off the foot, right? And where you work that in there. And so the, the stations is really big on uh, for us. You know, working double team blocks. Uh, we talked about the wall drill. You know, so we're a big wall return team on punt return. And guys want to go into the wall and how we want to block. So I think it's really important to get those stations. You know, at least we're going to do those at least three times during training camp and at least once during the week during the season. And the drills that we may do during those periods will change. But there's some Utica College Shield punt for you. And, you know, uh, you know, if you guys have questions, you know, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter uh, at Coach Faggiano. Uh, you know, reach out. Uh, you can find my email on our, on our website, ucpioneers.com. And Coach Bannister, it was just great talking football. I you know, hope the guys got something out of that.